sometimes that's not what you want to hear you don't want to hear you see your son again always in a better place you want to see him now and enjoy him now hello everybody and welcome back to green pastures green pastures is a place to be if you want to have a new beginning new growth peace and restoration so today's an interesting day um today we're just going to go over a uh, scripture in samuel it's a scripture about david and david as we know is a king and david was a righteous man and he was a man after god's own heart and we're just going to touch on the moment that David sinned against God and his consequences of him losing his son. And how did David immediately react to the loss of his son? And he would immediately react to what's God. So the whole story is about David sending out Uriah out in battle and taking his life. And he put him at the very front row, sent him out and caused Uriah's death because he had slept with Uriah's wife. So at the moment that happened, God had the consequences for David's sin. And the Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became sick. David therefore sought God on behalf of the child. And David fasted and went in, and lay all night on the ground. An elder of the house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat with them. On the seventh day the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him, The child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servant were whispering together, David understood that the child was dead. And David said to his servant, Is the child dead? He said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. He then went to his own house. And when he asked, they set food before him and he ate. Then his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for your child while he was alive, but then the child died. When the child died, you arose and you ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he's dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not come to me. David knew that he did wrong, and he knew that his child was not going to leave because God specifically told him that he was going to take away that child from him, right? God said that child will not leave, he will take the child away. However, we see that David, he trusted in God, and he still, he still kept praying for God to save that child. We saw David fasting, we saw David praying, and David didn't eat. He just stayed and just worshiped God and prayed to God so that God may maybe have some, show him some grace or some favor and save that child. So we see that David never gave up hope, knowing that and the child was going to die, knowing that it was a consequences for his sin. So in my case, losing Malachi... I had I had faith in God. Regardless, they said that he wouldn't make it. They said that I should um, maybe terminate the pregnancy. There was a lot of negative words. But then I kept the faith and I continued praying to God, seeking God, asking people to pray for me. Everyone believed and they said that um, my baby would have made it. But then... God had other plans. So we see that David, he um, he was really believing God to save his child. Really believing God to save his child in spite of. And there was a very righteous and faithful man. And he was believing God to save his child. And the moment the child died, his reaction changes. 
and you would say to yourself, shouldn't be David, shouldn't he be mad at God for taking his child away from him? Or shouldn't he be turning away from God? Shouldn't he just stop believing in God? We could question that because could you imagine God take his, his child away from him? But then we see David, as soon as he found out that his child died, what did he do? Let's dig into the scripture again. But when David saw that his servant whispering together, David understood that the child was dead. And David said to his servant, Is the child dead? They said he is dead. David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. That is just amazing. As soon as he found out that his child died, he got up, went went to the went into the house of the Lord, and he worshipped God. Like he did not stay in that dark place for a very long time. And David is a very good example that we could follow. It's not easy. It's not easy because I've been through it. I lost my child. It's not easy to just get up and worship God as soon as your child died but we see that David was looking at a bigger picture even at the end he said that you know when they were asking him are you okay how comes you were crying and praying and weeping and not eating when your child was alive but as soon as he died you got up and you worship you got up and you're eating and he said a very interesting thing he said while the child was still alive I fasted and wept for I said who knows whether the Lord will will be gracious to me that he may save my child but now he's dead why should I fast can I bring him back again I shall go to him but he will not return to me so David was very optimistic that he would see his child again in paradise he said that why should I still and be fasting and crying the child is dead there's nothing I could do and it's very harsh to say he said can I bring him back? Because he's dead. Can I bring him back again? He said, no, but I shall go to him. But he will not return to me. So they would have hoped that he would see his son again in paradise. That, you know what, there's nothing I could do right now. The child died. He's in the hands of God. God took him away from me. I can bring him back, but I know that I will see him again. I know that I will see my son again. I know I will see Malachi again. And sometimes it's... it's it, this is, it is so hard to even grasp because as human beings, you know, people, when you're grieving, people will tell you, oh, it's okay. You will see your son again. Is it, you will see your son again in heaven. Oh, it's okay. He's in a better place right now. And at, sometimes that's not what you want to hear. You don't want to hear you'll see your son again. Oh, he's in a better place. You want to see him now. You want to enjoy him now. But then when you're spiritually in line with God and his character and his promises and what he promised you, then it's, it's, and you're so in tune with him. You have a relationship with him that, that's, that could never be broken in spite of when you're sold out for him and you know he is not a man that he would lie to you and he, he's not a man that he would break his promise. You know that you will see your loved one again in heaven. You will be reunited with your loved one again. It's easier said than done because when I was grieving Malachi and everyone was telling me, oh, you will see him again in heaven. Oh, you know, he's in a better place, blah, blah, blah. It's true, but I didn't want to hear that right now. But I just love how David the story of David, please go check Second Samuel, read the whole story. I just love how he just, he didn't stay long in a dark place. He didn't stay mad at God. He didn't stay angry at God. He did, he did what he had to do while his son was alive. He prayed. He fasted. He did what he had to do. He, he sought after God. He went in, you know, in prayer before God. But then when you leave this earth, he's like, you know what? I can't bring him back. But I will see him again. And later on, David did have another son. He, God did bless him with Solomon, with his wife Bathsheba. 
and so they did have another son after that but then his whole demeanor and his whole attitude towards losing one of his son to me was a good example to follow because not every time we could just stand back up and wash our face and marry for our family and eat again after we lose someone it's so hard to get back to that happy place sometime but david had a purpose he had a job to do he knew his purpose he knew his job so he just said you know what lord that's your will you took my son i'm gonna move on because i know that you have a job for me to do on this earth and i was and it's not the end of the world i will see my son again in heaven i will see my love when i get in paradise could you imagine just turning turning away from god because you're, you're experiencing hurt in your life you turn your back from god the only hope to see a loved one that you have lost the only hope that you have because without god you won't be able to see your loved one that you lost heaven wouldn't be your place think of it that way if i remain faithful to god in spite of stick through the process trust the pro process don't turn your back on god that you will see a loved one again that's a promise he gave you and god cannot go back on his promise he promised you to see a loved one again so you will see them again instead of turning away from god and the gospel of god and the work of god and leading yourself down a straight to the world or giving yourself up to the world and living for the world what what are you living for you're living for there's no hope when you live for the world and act like the world and turn away from god there's no hope so the same loved one that you are, you are mourning for or grieving for on earth, there's no hope to see them again because you have turned your back away from God. So my encouragement to you is remain faithful. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to God. He will see you through. He will pull you out of the dark place that you're in. Seek the Lord. Seek the word of God. See what the word of God is saying follow the example of biblical uh, and kings and leaders and disciples in the bible even and it's okay to grow it's okay to weep but you don't remain there for for that long isn't even jesus wept for his friend lazarus it was sad it was his friend his friend died he wept it's okay to cry it's okay to weep but then we know that we serve a god that could lift us up from the dark place that we're in sometimes the enemy want to keep us there to stop our blessing to block us from doing what god has called us to be you could still mourn and grieve with god be in christ and still mourn no one is telling you to stop grieving you could take as long as you want to grieve but doing it in christ is so much easier you feel so much lighter you don't feel like the burden is only yours. You don't feel like you're always carrying that burden on your own and there's no one to help you. Christ is the burden carrier. Christ will pull you through. He will see you through. He will heal you. He will mend the broken heart. And I'm speaking from experience. Trust and believe he will mend the broken heart. He will heal you from the pain and the hurt that you're experiencing. It is not forever. It is not for long. You will look back at your life five years from now and say, Wow, look at where God have, has taken me. And look at where he has brought me. And you will see that there's so much more in you. So much greatness in you that has given birth. That has come forth of you because you heal in Christ. And you allow him in to heal you, not you trying to heal yourself. Again, this is my encouragement to you. Stay blessed. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. God bless you.